Well, today I have a, a sketch of yellow tulips um, that have been purchased early in the spring. Um, we don't have tulips coming out yet here in Connecticut, but hopefully very soon. Um, I'm going to start this painting with some background. This is actually the wall of my kitchen where I have um, several works of art and um, two by me and two by others that are very good artists. And um, I thought I would put a wash of color that is very similar to the actual color of the wall. Um, I'm not sure I can get the exact same color as the wall, but it really doesn't matter. I, I liked the color and I, I just want to have something similar in this painting. Also I decided that I wanted to have some of the paints in this painting be made out of um, ground crystals and um, so I'm um, and, and natural materials. So I'm deliberately going to start with uh, one of Daniel Smith's Primatech colors, which are made out of ground crystals. And this one is um, natural, sleeping beauty, turquoise. So it's made from the from the turquoise, which comes in the southwest part of the U.S. and um, I think it's also from Mexico. So, one of the reasons I decided to work with the Primatech colors in this painting was not just because of the the color being the right color for what I'm wanting here. But I like the energy from the crystals um, to be held in the painting. Sometimes when I'm doing something that I really like the image of, or if it has a special meaning to me, then I will use the crystal paints to hold my energy and my feeling as I'm painting that particular subject. And this wall um, is important to me. The paintings on it are, are um, have some memories and um, I might hang, I might even hang this painting in my kitchen. But either way, I want it to, I want to paint this wall with a feeling of love for my kitchen and gratitude for it. And, um, Right now it's the place where the puppies are spending all their time. When they play, they play in the kitchen. And um, the kitchen is always a really happy spot in this house. It's got nice sunlight and, and I actually like to set up the still lifes there and draw from there. The light is good. So I'm just um, putting this Sleeping Beauty, it's called Sleeping Beauty Turquoise, that's the name of this particular turquoise. 
and I think you might be able to see that it has a little bit of granulation in it, which is natural for many of the crystal based paints. They, they segregate and granulate, have a texture. I wasn't sure how I was going to apply the paint, whether I would do a wash that was varied, but I'm, I seem to be just going forward with it in a pretty simple way where the color is fairly even. I put down some water first and with hopes that that would help to spread it out fairly evenly. So I did first lay down just some plain water with a flat brush and so now I'm just putting the color in and hoping that <clears throat> that it will spread out fairly evenly. I must say, when I put the still life, and I set it up in the vase there on the table, and I have hand painted that table, which is also done in blues and turquoise colors, and the wall I had just painted um, again, my daughter painted it the first time, and I've just repainted it. Um, now after the puppies, I'll have to paint it again, because they've actually been chewing on it. But um, I really like the way the flowers in the vase looked against the color of that wall when I took some pictures of it. And when I was sketching it, and I thought, oh, I really need to, I really need to do that. And it reminds me a little bit of Matisse and um, the way that he would put certain still lifes in his rooms, He'd set them up, and you could see paintings on the wall and in his as part of his composition. So I'm reading a book now uh, called uh, Picasso and Matisse, and I'm also reading a separate book um, by the former muse of Picasso and um, Francois Gillet who also wrote a book on Picasso and Matisse. And there are so many pictures that each one did. And it was so interesting how the work of each one influenced the other. And so I thought I would do something a little bit in the Matisse style of having a simple still life in a room, one of my rooms, not one of his rooms, one of my rooms with some of the paintings on the wall. So I'm not going to try to paint in the style of Matisse because that is not my style that because it's some paint um, spread around. There, I have to fix this too, some paint spread around because this is a actually a white vase. It's a white uh, pitcher that I use um, for tea and, and juice. So I like the shape of it so I thought it would be and it and since it's white and it has a little bit of uh, design on it, 
It's got a nice style to it. So I thought, well, maybe I can do that. It looked very pretty on the table, the blue table. It's a blue table that I painted with lots of different blues. Made it look a bit distressed. It was my father's workbench in the barn. Um, and so when my father died, it was one of the things that I wanted to have along with some old tools that had been his and some tools that had been my grandfather's and great-grandfather's. Some very old farm tools. And that table, which is um, was actually a work table, but isn't it? And has holes in it where the vice was and and lots of distress. But I've um, painted it, but keeping a sense of it being distressed. And um, painted it in blues and painted the wall in turquoise. So, having the Sleeping Beauty turquoise is very important for me because it's a wonderful stone with very precious um, energy in it. The turquoise is uh, considered a stone of protection by Native Americans. And so I guess if I have a feeling in going forward with this painting, it is um, the protection of the kitchen and the home life with the uh, energy of the Sleeping Beauty crystal. to get it to be even. Um, every time one adds a stroke, it's a little difficult to have it not create a bloom and to be even. But so far it's not too bad. Not like acrylics or oils where you can so easily get very even color. Try to do this without getting my hand in the middle of the paint. Not easy. I've got some paint there that I don't want to in that little bit of picture, but I don't think I'm going to be able to get it up since the camera is on the board. I can't really move the stand of the camera. Okay. So that's the beginning of this. And, um, I'm planning to continue to use some of the crystal base paints in the leaves of the uh, paints. I'm going to use um, Appetite, um, Appetite or Appetite, it's really like Appetite. Uh, it comes in two colors, blue and it comes in green, that also, and that granulates quite a lot. And I'm going to use it in the uh, leaves of the tulips. And I may use a little bit of um, French ochre. Um, and uh, natural ochre. And a little bit of um, garnet in the coloring of the... I see I've got a hair here. I don't know if I can get that picked up. So hard to get them picked up once they're in there. I really want to 
get that out of there. Mm. It's not cooperating. That's one of the hairs of the, uh, the sable brush. I can see it there. There it is. There it is. Got it. Got it. So now I just have to spread out this color. Sometimes the hairs of the sable brushes come out. And and but for this initial wash it's so so nice to use uh, the sable because it does hold a lot of water. And the brush does have a nice point to get around some of these corners. So let's hope that that hair there didn't uh, didn't ruin the painting. All right, seems okay. So I'm going to use some. Uh, I mentioned I'm going to use the green and blue appetite or appetite. Perhaps a little bit of um, softly green fuchsia, and I'm thinking. Um, some jadeite. Jadeite is available too. So I have those colors. I've taken them out and, um, and we'll put those into the leaves. And the the vase is white so it'll just be having some normal neutrals used to um, put the shadowing of the design on the vase and the shading on the vase to give it some shape. But there'll be the white of the paper on will be maintained in many of the white areas. Um, the tulips will be yellow and um, with some highlights, maybe from orange and um, and red. So that's it for now. We'll uh, continue with this after everything's dry. Okay. Well, I've mixed together some of the um, Sleeping Beauty turquoise with fuchsite. Um, fuchsite, which is, comes in a very light um, very, very light bluish green, and that also is um, made directly from the fuchsite crystals. And I've put a little bit of, um, and the fuchsite is iridescent, um, so I didn't want too much of it because too much sparkle on um, the painting wouldn't be great. And I put a little bit of titanium white in that because I wanted the color. Oh, another one of those hairs. Oh, all right, let me just, it's early so I can just bring him with that. Okay, so um, I want the table to be similar in many ways to the walls, but slightly different, so um, this is probably a nice transition, but not too close to the same color. And um, they, they're carrying the same feeling of the the table in the kitchen is. distressed and lighter than the wall, but has many of the similar colors of the wall. So I'm not trying to replicate what's in the kitchen, but I do want to um, have it have some of the same feeling of the colors that have been chosen there. And these particular stones, the turquoise and the 
fuchsia are really lovely special stones for me. I really, I have them scattered about the house. So, on different mantles and shelves. So it's nice to have them in a painting. It seems to be working pretty well. I wasn't sure how it would work with the, the addition of the titanium white. But it is a, a white that is um, it's a watercolor white and uh, it is semi opaque so it adds a little bit of opacity to the fairly iridescent um, quality of the the fuchsia which has like a mica, like a mica iridescence in it natural to the stone okay I think that's that's okay I'm not going to get it perfectly even. It's just not going to happen. Pretty impossible. And um, if I were able to lift the board, if it wasn't on camera, I might lift the board and having it uh, and spraying a little so that it spreads. But it's good enough. It doesn't have to be perfect. Yeah. Good. It's turning out pretty nicely. I like the I like the feeling of it. I'm not going to try to replicate the paintings that are on the wall. That would be difficult. But I am so I'm not sure how I'm going to portray the essence of those paintings. Two of them are Native American works, and uh, by two very, very good artists, so I won't try to <laughs> pretend to reproduce them, but I hope to pick up just some of the colors and shapes in those paintings, of them just a little bit. And there is some turquoise in the uh, big painting and in the smaller ones too. Okay, that's not a bad start. Now this really has to... I was able to go back in even though the, the wall is not dry yet, but the... Um, But since I was just working on the bottom here, um, I could work fairly safely um, next to the wet wall to do the table. So that's it for now. Take care. We'll come back when it's all dry. Well, I fiddled around <clears throat> with these little tiny paintings that will be on the wall. Um, because it was time-consuming and um, not much of, of a lesson. But one of the things that I did do was take artist tape and um, protect the edges of the internal paintings. And um, <clears throat> because I don't like to reuse masking fluid very much, <clears throat> so I used this artist tape, which is low-tech, and the adhesive is archival. So it is the only tape that you can really trust from a point of view of being archival. Um, but you can also try um, Scotch brand drafting tape. And you can use the frisket, which can give you a nice edge. 
This is the, um, let's see if I have a frisket here to show you. Yeah, this is, you can use frisket, which is, um, comes in a sheet, and you can cut it up in little pieces to do whatever you want. It doesn't quite protect as much as the artist tape does. The frisket is nice for drawing a curved edge or anything else, but for a very straight edge, I like the idea of doing that. So I've got to put some background in these three little imaginary paintings. Now what I did was use the fuchsia and um, mix, and I used Hansa yellow and a bright orange and a little bit of red. The reason I did that is that those are the colors that I'm going to drop into the yellow tulips for shading. And the fuchsia carries forward the table. Also here, um, I wanted to paint something that was um, recognizable. So uh, I actually might call this painting the blue vase because I have another painting online, a demonstration of uh, a painting of the blue vase. So I might call this painting the blue vase. I don't always name my paintings, but sometimes I do. And here, um, this is an imaginary uh, sunset landscape. Now what I wanted to just show you is that I've got some crystalline colors here. The Sleeping Beauty turquoise and some um, this one is uh, let's see which one is this this one is Amazonite and this is um, blue appetite appetite or appetite green appetite or appetite and um, and I have some jadeite. So I have a few greens, and I have this intense dark blue. What I'm going to do, I put some of that blue in here. I'm going to use my flat, and I'm going to use the paint right out of the tube to paint next to this tape, because I don't want to add water, because unfortunately, unless you're using masking fluid, what, if you add a wet amount of paint next to the tape, it will bleed under the tape. So I'm using a very, very dry brush approach because I'm not being rigorous about these little paintings. I just want them to be indicative that they're little paintings. Um, and to create that kind of um, Matisse-like approach to showing that this is in my kitchen where I do have little paintings that have uh, turquoise and orange and yellow in them. And um, these are not the same that paintings, but, um, but the color scheme is compatible. So I'm just uh, putting this paint, paint on fairly dry and thick, as little water as possible just to make the paint work. But careful not to put any really super wet paint next to the tape because everything except masking fluid will bleed under the tape. And that includes the frisket. And then I'm going to do the same thing over here. And partly that's because I just want to carry the harmony of the colors in the painting into these little tiny paintings. But the theme of them and what they are doesn't matter. I decided that since this is a still life of flowers, that um, the three paintings three small paintings essentially 
give the impression of being flowers. Um, with the, the one on the right being in a vase and the other two being flowers in a garden setting. So I may put some of the greens that are in the leaves in those garden setting flowers. So I just wanted to briefly show you that. I didn't want to take a lot of time to have you see all the little applications of bits of, of yellow and orange and fuchsia on these little squares and to see me taping down the tape. But yeah, so I'm going to make this dark near the vase so we can tell it's a vase. I may even add a little bit of um, paint gray or black into this mix. And I don't mind that I'm adding a normal paint on top or into my crystalline paint because from my point of view it's an energy healing practitioner, the, the energy of the crystals will carry regardless of whether I've included some additional paints on top or within. So that's it. I'll put a little more um, black on some of the edges of this one too, just to create that sharper edge. But I have to be careful not to with the brush too much. So if I'm lucky, this will not bleed and I'll have a real nice sharp edge. Um, because I was assuming that I would have a little sharp edge that would be a, a bit of a white edge inside of the frame as if this was a watercolor with a white mat. the um, some green and jet, jetite and um, amazonite, those two greens. So I might just put a little bit of green here and there in among the flowers and leaves. It's very subtle, but it's all right. It's just to create the impression of color and um, possibly garden kind of setting. Yeah, just wanted to do that little bit. That'll dry very quickly. Over here, with the colors that I put in, again, I used that blue, uh, appet blue appetite in this background here, but I included a little bit of Payne's Gray um, to darken some, and I made a little bit of violet to create a little bit of like mountains. Okay. Now this this one already is dry, so I'll just pick up this tape very carefully. So as not to tear the surface of the paper, just to show you that look at what a nice edge it did make as if there's a nice white mat next to the painting. And when I do the frame around the painting, maybe I'll put some tape on again. But um, yeah, so that's the way that works. I think for now I might, well, I'll take this one off. This, this should be, it doesn't have to be fully dry as long as it didn't bleed, it should be fine. I'll just pull this tape off. Got a nice sharp edge there. And here also. Very nice. Very nice. Just done with the artist tape, which is the one tape that if you have professional work with professional paper and paint so that nothing yellows, you will want to use artist tape because it's archival and it will never cause your work 
to yellow. Um, otherwise, your painting can last for hundreds of years and never yellow if you've used, it will never fade and never yellow if you've used um, good paint, good paper, and protected it with archival tape or archival masking fluid. But I only use a masking fluid sometimes when I really feel I need it. It's kind of a, a bear to, uh, to deal with. You have to use it with, uh, I use it with nibs or sometimes, um, you know, you can use it with a stick that has a point on it. You can use it with a, an inexpensive brush. So there, those internal edges are very, very nice. The external ones I didn't protect with tape, I just painted, but when I put a dark frame around it, it'll be good. So I just wanted to show that to you. Hope you enjoyed it. I, I have used all colors that are going to be in the painting of the tulips, and I feel that the harmony of the colors in the background are, is essential with... Um, with the main subject matter here. And I did a simple landscape here so as not to be in contradiction with the detail of the flowers and, and um, the painting that I actually have on the wall is a lithograph of a native woman and her baby and it would have been far too complex and distracting to create that. But this simple kind of sunset with the same colors that are going to be in the shadows of the tulips should complement pretty well. The next step will be, um, I think, leaves and then the tulips and the final step will be the white pitcher that is serving as a vase here. Hi everybody. Um, I have um, drawn with the pencil the um, lines of the mat versus the frame and um, of each painting and I've also taken some water where the background color was infringing in the frame color and I've just um, softened the color so that there are no strong lines. I don't mind that some of the color goes into the frame but I don't want it to be a hard edge under the uh, color of the frame. So what I'm going to do is just show you one little frame uh, because there's no point in putting you through the... <coughs> the, the painstaking process of doing every little frame. So I decided to... I tried one out and I like it. It carries forward the combination of colors that I have, but it adds a little bit of a brown sense of tone. So I've decided to use quinacridone burnt scarlet. Um, but it can be t this can be made by mixing together. You know, all the colors can be made by, well, most of them can be made by mixing together certain colors. So you could take um, any scarlet or any uh, or a, a, a alizarin crimson and mix it with a burnt sienna and create a burnt scarlet. Uh, the nice thing about the burnt scarlet is it's a quinacridone color and they are all very very um, transparent and most of this painting so far with the background of the Primatech colors and also particularly since I mixed together some semi-opaque titanium white with the fuchsite to make the table, um, I, I want to have a transition that works for having a little more watery, transparent. Now I'm just adding some water. So I was using the color